Classic Tales, Arabian Nights. The First Calendar's Tale. The first calendar began his tale, explaining that he was the son of a king, and his uncle also ruled a neighboring country. His uncle had two children, a son and a daughter. The calendar and his cousin, the prince, were born on the same day and were sworn friends. Every year, he would visit his uncle's kingdom and stay for around four months to spend time with his cousin. One day, after his cousin hosted a great feast in his honor, the cousin confided in him, asking for a favor. His cousin had designed a building and had it constructed, but he needed the calendar to swear to keep his secret. The calendar agreed, as he was very attached to his cousin. His cousin then introduced him to a richly dressed, veiled lady without revealing her name. The cousin asked him to accompany the lady to a cemetery where he would find a newly built dome-like tomb and wait there. The calendar agreed and escorted the lady to the cemetery under the moonlight. Soon after, his cousin arrived carrying a small vessel of water, a pickaxe, and a little bag of plaster. He began to destroy an empty sepulcher in the middle of the tomb and dug into the ground revealing a trapdoor with a spiral staircase beneath. His cousin instructed the lady to descend the stairs, thanked the calendar, and bid him farewell, asking him to restore the tomb to its original state. Confused but loyal, the calendar did as instructed and returned to the palace to sleep. The next morning, he couldn't stop thinking about the previous night. He asked a servant to check on his cousin, only to discover that his cousin had not returned since the previous night. His uncle was also away hunting. Worried, he returned to the cemetery every day for four days but found nothing. He decided to go back to his father's kingdom. Upon arrival, he was detained by a large number of guards and learned that the soldiers had rebelled, killed his father, and placed the Grand Vizier on the throne. The Grand Vizier, who had hated him since childhood due to an accident where the calendar accidentally shot the Vizier in the eye with a stone arrow, ordered his arrest. The Grand Vizier, full of hatred, tore out his right eye and ordered a soldier to execute him in the desert. However, the executioner, remembering the kindness of the calendar and his father, told him to flee and never return. The calendar fled to his uncle's kingdom and recounted his ordeal. His uncle shared in his sorrow and revealed that his cousin was still missing. Feeling he could no longer keep the secret, the calendar told his uncle the truth. Desperate to find his son, his uncle insisted they go to the cemetery together. After searching, they found the sepulcher, dug into the ground, and descended the spiral staircase. At the bottom, they were hit by thick smoke, but persisted until they reached a brilliantly lit room filled with everyday necessities. In the center, they found a stone platform with the cousin and the lady lying there, burned almost to charcoal. The calendar was shocked and saddened, but his uncle, instead of mourning, angrily struck his son's body with his slipper. The calendar stopped his uncle, asking why he was hitting his deceased son. His uncle explained that his son had been in love with his sister since childhood, and their relationship had become sinful. Despite many attempts to separate them, including offering beautiful princesses for marriage, his son refused. Eventually, his uncle had separated them, but the son and daughter had built this tomb to be together. He believed it was divine judgment that they had burned. The uncle then embraced the calendar, declaring him his new son. Not long after returning to the palace, they heard the sound of kettle drums and cymbals, signaling an enemy attack. The attacking forces were led by the treacherous Grand Vizier. 
Unprepared for the sudden assault, the kingdom fell and the uncle was killed. The Kalandar managed to escape through a hidden passage, aided by loyal officials. To avoid detection, he shaved his head and eyebrows and donned the calendar robe, traveling slowly until he reached the Caliph's kingdom. Upon arrival, unsure where to go, he met the second calendar, who was in a similar situation. Shortly after, the third calendar joined them. They were fortunate to find this mansion and be allowed to stay. After hearing his story, the eldest lady was satisfied and allowed the first calendar to leave. However, he asked to stay as he wished to hear the stories of the rest of the people there.